So in this video, we're going to talk about asymptotes of rational functions. So asymptotes, just informally, I think a lot of people know what they are if they're watching this video. So an asymptote is an invisible line that a graph usually does not cross. So yes, it is possible for a graph to cross this line. I think a lot of times people think like, oh, it can't cross at all. Um, there are actually situations where it will happen, and we will see that in this video series. Okay. So let's say that you've got a rational function. Um, so that's of the form p of x over q of x, where p and q, these are both um, polynomials. OK, so the formal definition, mathematically, of an asymptote, a vertical asymptote, it's kind of a wacky definition, but go with me here. So if the value of f of x is going to infinity, the absolute value of um, f of x is going to infinity as x approaches a, then the asymptote is x equals a. Okay, so, you know, I'm a math teacher, so I've got to tell you what the formal definition is. We're going to break down what this means. This actually has a consequence that's pretty easy to work with, but we just want to appreciate what the formal definition is. And the thing I want to point out here just is that x equals a. Just remember that as we're going through this. Okay, let's talk about horizontal asymptotes. So, if f of x approaches b as the absolute value of x approaches infinity, then the asymptote is y equals b. Okay, again, I just want to point out y equals b. We're going to unpack what all of this means as we go through the video, so let's just keep going through it. The important thing with this, asymptotes are equations. This is like one of the most common kind of, I will call it a sloppy mistake. If you, so it's a line, that's what it is, right? A line has an equation, so it's got to be x equals a, y equals b. What I'm trying to say is you can't say the asymptote is 7, the asymptote is negative 3. You can't just state a number. It has to have a x equals or a y equals, okay? Very, very important that you get that part right. It seems like a minor thing, but it really does mean something. Okay, so let's go back to unpacking those definitions. Finding vertical asymptotes is actually pretty simple. All you have to do is set the denominator equal to 0 and solve for x. And the answer to that is going to be the asymptote or asymptotes. So we will take a look at that in a few minutes. But this part, I think, is pretty straightforward. Now, horizontal asymptotes, this can be a little trickier. And there are two approaches to this. So let's unpack these. The first approach, I think, is like with a more pre-calculus mindset. So it doesn't really get to the underbelly of like why, but it will definitely get the job done. Okay, so the pre-calculus way to deal with this, we look at the numerator and the denominator. If the numerator has a lesser degree than the denominator, then the horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals 0. So you have to look at the degree of the top and the bottom. The numerator is lesser, then you automatically get to say y equals 0. Now, if the numerator and denominator have the same degree, so remember, these are rational functions, so the top and the bottom, these, these are the forms of the polynomial, right? We've seen this a couple times. So if you have the same degree on the top and the bottom for your polynomials, then what you're going to do is you're going to take the leading coefficient of the top and the bottom and that's going to be your asymptote, the leading coefficient at the top, the leading coefficient at the bottom. And again, we will see examples of this in a few minutes, but this would be the horizontal asymptote. Now, the last case that I want to discuss is, so if the numerator has exactly one degree more, i.e. greater than the denominator, then there is an oblique asymptote, not a horizontal asymptote. So you can get this whole job done just by looking at the degree of the top and the bottom. That is way one, and I will show you how to do all of that in some examples, but I must talk about way two, which is a little bit more of a calculus-minded mindset. <laughs> I, didn't, I don't know how else to express this. Okay, so we can't tell you everything about calculus because you still need more tools to do this, but we can kind of discuss like the big idea with this, and this will come back around at a later point. So here's a fact. As x approaches infinity, the value of 1 over x is eventually going to equal 0. So the, as x keeps going out and out to infinity, this value goes to 0. What? <laughs> All right, so let's, let's unpack this. 
So let's just start plugging in some numbers into the expression 1 over x for a moment just to explore this. 1 over 3, this is a decimal, is 0.33333. 1 over 4 is 0.25. So the larger number I put in, the smaller decimal value I get. So if I go from 1 over 4 to 1 over 100, I go from 0.25 to 0 0.01. And if I go from 1 over 100, say, to 1 over a million, look at how tiny this number gets. Or 1 over a billion, again, look at how tiny this number gets. So the idea here is that if x starts to get just to be like infinitely large, think of the craziest largest numbers that you can come up with and then think of another group, lar number larger than that. The, the higher it gets, the value of this fraction starts to get so tiny it might as well be zero. And while we can't plug in infinity, infinity is, infinity is a concept and not a number, if we could, if we actually could approach, if we could get to infinity, the value of this would be zero. So this is kind of a deeper concept and the details of this get filled in in calculus, but the, the gist of it is, is in this argument here. So this is calculus minded, but with some asterisks that get filled in at a later time. Okay. So if I know this, you want to just remember this. 1 over x, as x goes to infinity, this will equal 0. Okay, so just remember that. The trick here is to divide the expression by the highest degree variable in the denominator and then to evaluate. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do that in a few minutes. This is actually a pretty simple exercise, and you'll use it again in calculus. So if you know you're going on to calculus, you might want to practice this now. Just a thought. All right. I want to talk about finding oblique asymptotes. So to find them, you just divide the numerator by the denominator and then you ignore the remainder. Again, we'll see some examples of that. I, I'm much more of an example person, so I just want to jump right into it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to find any asymptotes for the following. So I've got the function x plus 2 over x squared plus 7x plus 12. Okay, so let's start with finding the vertical asymptote. So to do that, remember, we take the denominator and we just set it equal to zero and we solved it. So, you know, you can just, however you would solve this polynomial, go for it. So in this case, I can factor this, right? This, this factors as x plus four and x plus three. And then if I were to solve for this, so I'd get x equals negative four and x equals negative three. So those are the two equations for the vertical asymptotes. Cool, so we're good to go. So that's all you have to do to find vertical asymptotes. It's, it's nice and straightforward. Just take the denominator, set it to equal to zero, and hope that solving for that is simple. Okay, now, horizontal asymptotes. I wanna talk about the two different ways to approach this. Okay, so with way one, this was all about just looking at the degree of the top and the bottom. The degree of the top, the highest variable here is x, this is a degree one, and the highest variable here would be x squared, so this is a degree two, very um, a polynomial. Okay, so according to that list, and maybe you want to like flip back to your notes just to like prove this to yourself, but when the degree of the, the bottom is greater than the degree of the top, then this is just automatic. Y equals zero. Boom. Done. Okay, so that is pretty straightforward, but if we use the calculus way, it takes a little bit more work, but it, it kind of explains why this works a little, a little bit better. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at this and say, okay, in the denominator, x squared is my highest variable term. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide every single part of this equation by x squared. So let me show you what that looks like. I've taken x and I've divided it by x squared, plus 2 divided it by x squared. And then each term in the denominator all of it is divided by x squared. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify each of these. So x over x squared, this will simplify to 1 over x. 2 over x squared, I can't simplify this. And so on. So what does that look like? And maybe you want to pause here and write some stuff down and just kind of get caught up and do the simplification on your own and then just check your answer. It's a good way to engage with this video so that your, your mind's not wandering. So if I simplify all of that, what I get is this expression here. 1 over x plus 2 over x squared over 1 plus 7 over x plus 12 over x squared. Okay, so 
remember, 1 over x, so we want to think about, like, we want to pretend that this expression is going to infinity. So why do I want to pretend that this expression is going to infinity? Where did that even come from? What are you doing, you crazy lady? Okay, so remember, with horizontal asymptotes baked into the definition, to find the horizontal asymptote, you need to assume that x is going to infinity. That's actually baked into the definition. And that's why we talked about that whole strategy that I was just going through. Okay, so I bring that all up because then this 1 over x, if x is going to infinity, this is going to end up going to 0. We talked about that little fact, right? And then what about 2 over x squared? Well, if 1 over x squared goes to 0, so will this. So basically anything, any number over an x is going to go to 0. So 2 over x is also going to go to 0. What about these two terms down here? Well, all of those are also going to go to 0. So the only thing that I have then is this 1. This 1, of course, does not go to 0. So the top is 0, the bottom is 1 plus 0. So in the end, I have this expression 0 over 1. 0 over 1 just equals 0. That is the value of my horizontal asymptote. So the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. Is this a longer way to get there? Um, yes. <laughs> Yes, it is. But it does explain why this works and it aligns more with the definition. And if you practice this now, if you know you're going on a calculus, all I'm saying is that like you're going to have really mastered this technique already. And like what we talk about in calculus hopefully makes, you know, a little bit more sense to you just because you've kind of been dipping your toe in that. Okay. So let's do another one now. So I actually want you to pause the video here and try to find the vertical asymptote. So set the denominator equal to zero and solve and then hit play when you're ready. Okay, so I will start with the vertical asymptote. So I'm gonna take four X minus two, set it equal to zero. So I can add the two to both sides and then I can just divide each side by four. So I get X equals one half. So there is my vertical asymptote. So boom, no problem. Okay, so let me clear some space. Okay, so using the two methods. Um, so if I use way one, so we'll say way one. So again, so I just look at the degree of the top. The degree of the top is one. The degree of the bottom is one. So when the degree of the top and the bottom are the same, then according to that, that first set of rules we were talking about, I just take the leading coefficients. So the horizontal asymptote then by that rule would just be equal to three over four. And we're good to go. Okay. But I want to try, I, it's good to practice. So for those of you going on to calculus, I just want to take a second to try this the other way. So the highest degree in this case is just X. So what I want you to do is I want you to try dividing everything here by X, everything that you see here and simplifying, and then just kind of going through that argument that we went through again, just to practice it. It's good practice. And then you can hit play when you're ready. Okay, so in the interest of time, I'm just going to go ahead and, and set up dividing everything by x. Okay, so I went ahead and I divided each part here by x, just so you can see it. And so if I were to simplify this, I would get 3 plus 1 over x and then 4 minus 2 over x. So remember that the definition states that we are assuming x is going to infinity. So if x is going to infinity, the value of this part here will be zero and the value of this part here will be zero. So the only thing that I'm left with then are these pieces here. They can't go to infinity. They're just three and four. That's it. They just stay static. So what that implies then is that my asymptote is three over four. So the exact same answer. Okay, so I have another one here. So I would encourage you just to try this example on your own. Hit play when you're ready and then I'll show you everything. So for the vertical asymptote, so you know I'm going to set my denominator equal to zero and this factors. So I can just say x equals three and x equals negative three. Those are my vertical asymptotes, so I'm good to go. So now for the horizontal asymptotes, so I want to prevent this video from getting too long. So I just want to point out that these both have the same degree to polynomial. So whichever method that you use to do this is fine, but if I just use the leading coefficient method, so I'm going to get one over one, which will equal one. So my horizontal asymptote is just equal to one. 
Okay, and so now for the last one, which is a little trickier, um, and I have another video with examples similar to this if you want to see more like this. Okay, so let's start with the vertical asymptote. That's always the easier one. So I just set the denominator equal to 3, and I get x equals negative 3 is my vertical asymptote. So that part's no problem. Now, the thing to notice here, this is a degree 2 polynomial on top, and this is a degree one polynomial on bottom. So if you remember from how we were discussing this, so if you're one degree higher than the denominator, then you will have um, a oblique asymptote. Okay, so to work with this, we just need to set up some polynomial division. So I'll clear some space. All right, so I'm going to use synthetic division here. The, the division that we want to do is x plus 3 into x squared plus x. But in this series, I've been using th synthetic division. So I'm going to just take the 0 and then the coefficients of the numerator. So that's 1, 1, and then 0 for the constant. So if you just want to use regular polynomial division, if you happen to find this video and you don't use synthetic division, that's fine. You'll still get the same conclusion, but in my series, I've been using synthetic division. Okay, so let's do this. So I'm going to bring the 1 down, multiply by negative 3. This becomes negative 2. This will become 6. Okay, so let's interpret this now. So I would read this part as x minus 2. You discard the remainder, 6 is the remainder. And if, by the way, if you did the division here, you would still get x minus 2. So this would be my oblique asymptote. That is the other asymptote in this scenario. OK, so like I said, I have more videos to show these types of examples. So if you are wanting to see a couple more like this, I have one that just focuses on that. So check that out. Otherwise, I will catch you guys in another video. Thanks for watching.